a stream of consciousness within you that is still strong, palpable in the heart, but you can already feel it. And it is a program of, of your egoic mind, of course, that you are very familiar with and that still shows up and that you are also still acting out. It is being acted out unconsciously so that it can show up so that it can get triggered, like it was triggered before. Hmm? And you instantly uh, recognized it. So, let us describe the feeling. The belief. That stream of sleeping consciousness, that program that program that has you spellbound. There are still many, of course, but this, this is a particular one that you felt like you wanted to address. You wanted to really give it your attention, feel it, get to know it, see if it's real. Hmm? And what you're seeing right now is it's like a snake. Or at least that's what you're seeing is that you are, there's a huge snake and you are embracing that and you are feeling it. And you are putting your lips on the, and your nose on the skin. And it has very, a, a lot of different colors and patterns has no smell, but it's very alive. And this snake is made up of all these streams of consciousness. And depending on how the awake the consciousness is, or how asleep the consciousness is uh, in that program, that's how much light emits from the snake. Mm -hmm. So it's an energetic snake. It's an energetic river of, of energy. And energy is your consciousness, is your soul, is a, is a, is a, um, a beam of flowing energy from your soul and at some point in your life a belief formed And that belief had a certain vibration, a belief about yourself. You weren't aware of that belief forming, but you were aware that your energy and your, your exuberance, your joy, your shine was being dimmed and suppressed. You were aware of that there was something lying heavy on your heart. You were aware um, when you were told these things or when you picked up these things, but especially when, when you were told certain things. What they did within you, how they felt within you. That you were aware of, the feeling you were aware of. And the feeling, it all just went inside, it all just went in and you just took it. 
it was it was what it was there you you were just recording it all And so now let's go back to the example that triggered, that flared up, that very old um, feeling and belief that is very deep within you and that is one of the, oh, one of the um, streams that, or snakes, you know, that make up the biggest of them all that you call depression. So it is a part of that depression. And we can we can look at every one of those streams and they entail smaller streams within. And then we can go into each and every one of those streams and they will entail smaller streams within. Um, it's just what we pick up, how subtle it was and then the stronger impressions yeah, and even the words that aren't said, even when we are children, um, we don't even understand words and we pick up everything. We pick up every um, vibration in our, uh, in our environment from every living being unconsciously. But we feel it and as our own and we react to it. Yes, animals do the same. Mm. Ooh, oh my God. Ooh. So can you please describe how what you perceived how the feeling was triggered and then what that felt like put words to it please I don't even remember. Um, I don't quite remember. It's hard to get back there. It had something to do with... Ah, okay. had something to do with the gifts that we are discovering within ourselves, the gifts that I am perceiving in others, the um, abilities and talents, talents maybe not the right word, but the spiritual abilities. Okay, and yeah, now we're coming closer. <laughs> this, yes, the spiritual abilities. Um, that others all seem to have, that I'm watching, to them it's, it's, it's like totally natural, as if it was so natural. And to me it's like, wow, I never had that experience and I don't have those abilities. And, uh, and that makes me feel very small and and that makes me um, question whether I am kidding myself, kidding yourself with what? when I have these thoughts that one day I will be able to... Okay, let me intervene right there. Let me intervene right there because that's also one of the... where, where the crooks lies. 
you have a, you have a, you, you see others, you see their expression of soul, how they stand in the world, self uh, sufficient and sovereign within themselves. They stand in the world, and what you, um, what you so admire because you desire it for you know it to have that experience in your own life um, which you have the undying hope and belief I can even say you have that belief and then sometimes you will even be be feeling so strongly that you will say I know I know that it's there in the future and that is the connection to other beloveds that that you are like your soul tribe let's just say that's the first word that comes to mind your soul tribe <sighs> where you can totally be yourself and you will totally be inspired And then to stand in the world on your own two feet, self-sufficiently in your sovereignty, yes. Then the other part is that you see others expressing their soul um, freely allowing their soul expression to come out and to share that and to and that is an ability that comes together within them that provides them the ability to be of great service to others and this ability of within the expression of their soul stream to be able to provide a service to others or to provide or create or stream something so beautiful into the world that it comes back to you and provides for you and then there is not this dependency on other avenues where you still have to abide, uh, obey, and adjust to certain conditions in order to be taken care of. Then you see and you hear certain uh, storylines and you compare it to your own and then comes at some point this sinking feeling like, oh my gosh, they're so far ahead and what, who am I kidding? I will never be able to do that. Um, I'm just lazy and incompetent and um, okay so then it comes back to this just the sinking feeling like phew, I'm never gonna it's like every day is a struggle I'm never gonna amount to anything and Nothing's ever going to come out of me that will be of, uh, that anyone will find worth in, and I will always be alone, and never stand in my sovereignty, and etc., 
self-sufficient on my own two feet, really getting into a flow of doing what I love because as you have been experiencing again for the last phase, for, for the last time, you know, period of time, there, yes, there has not been any Okay, so actually I need to be quiet now. I have come far away from myself. Because a lot of mind has come in now, a lot of mind. So we have to clear the mind out of the way first again, so to come to that. Because we don't have to, it's way too complicated this way. There is still a potential within you of feeling this about yourself because that is still not dissolved. There is still a part of you that feels this way about yourself. Like you're absolutely good for nothing. You're absolutely incapable of producing, creating anything. And you're, you're not capable of finding joy in life. And you can just um, basically kind of do the best to keep your body, you know, do, do your best every day. And then basically it's just waiting for one day you'll die. Yeah. But nothing's ever going to, you know, happen. You're going to be sitting in this place for the rest of your life. Um, you know, that's the depression kind of mindset and um, as long as there is still are still these little streams in there that are vibrating within that river of dark light, you know, dimmed light of depression. And it's a very slow moving river, actually. It's very, very, very slow, 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 slow. Um, then you will become a match to that because you need to meet it in order to feel it, in order to be back in that reality where you think your first reaction is, oh God, I can't believe I'm still here. And you're only still there because you are getting in touch with that part of you that is still stuck there like in that dream that was given to you by your spirit guide where you go down all the way all the way all the way all the way to the lowest level of yourself and meet all your aspects that are stuck there in the dark and by by going down there and meeting them you bring the light in there you and you wake them up you remember remind them of who they are of themselves who they really are of the truth you wake them up from that nightmare. But you gotta go down there. And sometimes it takes a while for you to um, get to that point where that, where that can still show up. Because you have already cleared and released so much. And your spirit guide has said back then when he gave you the dream that you would 
you know, it's quantum, it's not linear, and you would go back and back over and over again into that, into those dungeons, so to speak. And it is that, that you doubt that. It is that, well, actually, that's exactly what is happening. So when you have these phases of zero inspiration, because when you are inspired, you are so, so uppity. You are so in, in it. You're so in it, and you don't doubt. And you know, because you feel it. You feel that in you. You feel your soul inside of you. You, you are... Uh, when you are expressing your soul and aligning in your soul and inspired then then you it all opens back up again and you see all the possibilities that will come from 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 this and that if you keep the inspiration if it it could stay the way you have it in that moment then you can see the timeline i mean how how it will con how it would continuously unfold in this high uh high frequency and it would it would continue to play on itself and and um, um, increase and grow Yes, and then you can see that anything is possible in the future, and it even feels like, well, of course, it is bound to be. And then this future that you feel is, is your heart's calling, and, and that, you, that, that creates joy when you think of it, that, that you feel, feel joyous about, you feel so good about. And then in the times when when there is none of that, when there is not a single, a single uh, inspiration or motivation or movement of, of, to do anything, really nothing. All you're doing is keeping your body alive and doing what you can to be good to your body and keeping your environment clean, you know, just maintenance, just maintenance. And, 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 and other than that, it's just like, you know, yeah, lying around, sitting around. And that's when you come into contact. Because that's when, again, you start to doubt all of it. You start to doubt yourself. And then you watch others. And then you start to compare yourselves. And you think, wow, you know, look at what they have done. And look at what they have been through. And I'm nowhere near them. And you compare the spiritual experiences they've had that you didn't have. And so forth. And that is the egoic mind. Then you are operating from the egoic mind. Because you could never be them and they could never be you. As you know every, yes, as you know that. That it is all about vibration. And it doesn't need to look in any way, shape or form the way that it looks for them. It doesn't need to, you don't need to know now what it's going to look like when you stand in the world on your own two feet, financially also, self-sufficient, only being so free, only doing what flows out of your heart in joy and what naturally is your motivation and your inspiration to do.
not even that is necessary um, and is a picture of your happiness because happiness doesn't have a picture happiness is always always that potential that we carry in our hearts which is um, joy the joy of who we are the that aliveness that you feel right now in your heart and that heart opening focus into that and that already is enough that already is enough to feel that this moment is the value of this moment the infinite value of this moment. Because you have been identified for so long with this voice and with these voices, with these aspects of yourself that are so resignated, they're just lying in a corner facing the wall waiting for death. And so sad. They feel entirely lost, forgotten, and insignificant. And the only thing that can bring them back to you, bring them back to themselves, to their true self that was there before they took on unconsciously this belief about themselves, this identity about themselves. Is that you go there just like in the, the dream from your spirit guide and you simply you simply are present with them you give them love and as you now give them love they start to slowly, slowly come alive. And you, the way, you, you being there and seeing them and loving them is the same that you experienced in your dream with Jesus being present with you and loving you. It is that love that they feel. That is the Christ Consciousness love coming through. And you bring that with your awareness, with your attention, with your consciousness of this feeling that feels so bad when you're depressed or when you just get like one thought or one feeling, uh, yeah, one thought and one feeling that pulls you down that you're so familiar with it's like a weight on you and it's like um, 
it's like you're tied down. As long as you have that identity, as long as you have that belief that you're, you haven't brought back home yet, that is in the, in the total, it's a lie. It's, it's totally not reflecting the truth, obviously. But it's not enough to just approach it mentally. You have to feel it. Mentally, though, it helps that when you notice that it comes up to point you there, to say, oh, oh, okay. Um, wow, I'm back in that story. I'm back in that stream. And this is what it feels like. So to welcome it, really, really to welcome it. And sometimes it'll take you a while to be able to make contact with that stream because it's so hidden, it's so wide, uh, wide, it's so deep down inside of you and you've already come to, in your overall frequency, to such a high place that sometimes it's hard for you, it takes a while until that gets triggered, that those very, very deep streams mm -hmm, of, of Sleeping consciousness. Let's just get some more water. Oh. Yeah, that topic, that topic of, of stuckness, and, you know, wow, nothing is happening, never going to get out of this um, prison. Now, mind you, it shows up. It's still showing up. But it's not there and active 100% of the time. And when you are in that, in the phase of feeling the inspiration, it's not there at all. Because then you can already see where you are now. You can see the process, how it's opening. And you know that that feeling and that opening is going to continue and that that feeling as you are following it because you're following your heart you're following that inspiration you're following your joy it will grow 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 it can only grow and it is so attractive and you know that it will always come back at the same time it also pulls you down every time when the other side comes still is coming back as well And you still fall into the mindset of it. You still identify. And that's why you still suffer. Because you haven't fully grasped, you haven't fully recognized what is going on. You're still putting it on yourself that you're not good enough. And that is why you are completely uninspired and you don't know what to do with yourself. And you're just lying on the sofa, sitting on the sofa, watching things. You don't then see the progress you have made. You only see, oh gosh, if, if I continue like this and I don't get inspired, I will never reach that dream, you know, that vision that you see when you're there, when you are inspired. Um, 
and and then it all it all crumbles and you 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 think again of the possibility that that's all just a fantasy of yours a wishful thinking in those moments in those phases those beliefs are there that you are nothing you are nobody you have no consequence you are completely uh, incapable you, you will remain a prisoner of your circumstances and of your body for the rest of your life Although that is not exactly what you are consciously thinking, those are the vibrations that are then present. And because you are not totally conscious about the fact that you are simply and powerfully connecting with those aspects of yourself that you are so familiar with. Now go back to the dream image. The aspects of yourself at the low, low, low levels that are lying in, in the sarco sar sarcophaguses, in, in the coffins, They're so dead. They're so asleep. They've given up. They've totally given up. <laughs> They've given up on life. You know, they're just waiting for... Just like animals when they think that's it. You know, they just curl up in a ball and wait for death. Yeah. And they cannot wake up without you. They cannot find home without you. You are their savior. You are the Christ to them. And of course, these are aspects of you. These are beliefs. These are identities, which are beliefs about yourself that hold a vibration, that hold a code, that hold a, that stream of feeling into your stream and that then that vibration has its creates an atmosphere that flows into the whole and has its effect. Now if you Gently, gently, you take this image. You take this image of going to this feeling that you have. And you feel it now. It's, the beauty is that the tightness, you can feel it in your heart because it's tight. And so you can make that contact in your heart. And it actually it feels so good. So you go to that place in your heart that you feel now and it's also in your throat somewhere around here you feel it also streams it's like streams of tentacles um, that go um, to different places yes yes and then as you speak of it and make contact with it it's already shifting it's already opening up opening up <laughs> yes and this is what we want you to do is when these this atmosphere of like the swamps of sorrow like in the never ending story you know when when just this no energy it's not there's no point in doing you know in walking another step there's just no point and you know you just like you're feeling it, you're feeling it.
and no motivation to do zero. 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 Nothing. 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 And then lots of eating to just to distract and to, to suppress those feelings. Yes. But what we want you to see is the opportunity in it and how this is the natural flow of things. You, After you have a time of inspiration, even when for your taste it is, it feels like the inspired times are so much shorter than the low times. And if you could only get on a roll in the inspired times, you know, just really get on a roll until it has its own momentum but why does does it always have to be crash into the, the, the low why does it always have to stop and you're back in the old ditch and dungeons yeah in the same feelings and that and that because it's always it always has gone back it gives you that feeling that okay you know, then you're back in that feeling is, well, at this pace, you know, and it's always been that way, I'm never going to get on a roll, and I'm never going to be able to express my, um, truly, uh, express my soul, you know, and step into the joy of being on this planet, and expression, and connection, and play, you know, and that is always out of reach, it seems, and yeah when when you crash and or or it's not even crashing anymore it's subtle it's more subtle it's just like it creeps in and then it just that gathers momentum yeah until you you're back thinking a thought that you that you are like wow i didn't think i could still believe in this i or i could still hold this thought or this belief that oh my gosh you know never going to, you know, never going to be free. I'm always going to be in prison like that. Okay, I'm never going to be able to do anything. Yeah. Okay, so know that the reason why you're not able and the reason why you get you get sucked back down and that inspirational field gets interrupted, you get sucked back in, is because there's still more waiting there for you. And all you need to do is to know that every day, every second, every moment, every single moment, every, there is not, there is not a moment when you are not when your whole entire consciousness system together with the whole entire um, consciousness that is asleep and all those the whole mechanism there is not a moment when that is not working for awakening and truth even though especially when you're in the false self it doesn't feel it feels the opposite and the false self of course is working against it it's uh, it's the opposite but it's about recognizing it and it's about then holding those aspects of you that think and feel that you are none of none of what you are when you know who you are but that you actually are who uh, what the programs what the egoic mind programs has you know the conditioning of your uh, identity that that is who you are it is the egoic mind just 
um, still active and you are connecting with it. And then you slip into it. That is why the channeling is so important for you to do. To always and always come back to see it instead of... But even when you do, let's say, get caught in it and wallow in it. Even that, only the egoic mind will say, Oh, you're so slow. Why can't you catch this quicker so we can get get to the good stuff, you know, get to the fun part again, you know? Why can't you um, reintegrate this quicker and, and notice immediately and be able to hold the space and feel it immediately? You know, that's just the egoic mind again. And, and it's always going to have the last word and that's, that's then the next gatekeeper, the next gatekeeper so that you stay in the egoic mind. Yeah? Yeah. Um, we want you to really get familiar with the mechanism because it truly is it truly is absolutely cunning but you can you can get familiar with it you can recognize it And as you're doing this channeling and the truth is coming through, you are also feeling the truth of what is being said. So you can remember that. Okay, and now you're also feeling the parts of yourself that are not so sure about this truth. That are because they're not in alignment with the truth, they're in the false self still. The truth of who you are, that's the, that's the light stream where it sounds balanced, where it sounds true, where it is clear, where it, it, it is itself undistorted, unidentified with a mask, false identity, story belief of itself that is so painful. And that is, and that is absolutely has nothing to do with who you really are that is so untrue about it's it's the opposite actually in a sense it is the opposite But only, of course, the opposite in the sense of duality. But we don't want to go into the mind now. Just pull it back in, pull it back into the heart. Yes, that everything is so slow. It takes so much time. That is also, who is judging that? That it's taking so much time and that it is too slow. And that at this pace, you know, you're never going to get anywhere. Ooh. Yeah, I can feel that. Mm -hmm. My belly. Right, and then, oh, and then, oh, yes, 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 yes. Right below the navel here. Oh, my God. So you see, you are giving it a voice. And so it is, it is being activated. Yeah, it's just being heard. And you are just there for that voice that is coming from an aspect of you. And you're just listening. 
just like Jesus, you love that aspect of yourself that has that belief that that feeling of yourself, that feeling that you're feeling, you just go there. And love is the only thing, it's all it needs, it's the only thing that will heal it. And that will instantly dissolve, bring it back home. And what is dissolving is that separate soul stream that is flowing in the opposite direction. That, that false separate identity that split off with its soul stream and formed an identity and now it is an aspect of you within you. And that form as a separate form, as a separate soul stream, um, dissolves and it comes back into the mother stream, into your soul stream as the false falseness through the love the falseness just gets it's just it's like a shadow in the light it just it just disappears and it was never real it was it was an experience that you had yes yes okay i can feel that now but this never was real. It was only a mask that you took on. That was just passed down. Nobody knew that they were wearing it. It was just passed on. Just passed on through the generations. <laughs> So what we want you to really get is that when you have these times that seem like they never end, where you have day after day after day, no motivation to do anything. You still take care of your body, you still take care of, um, of your environment, keep everything clean, keep your body fed and exercised, more or less. But you see, even that is the ego saying more or less, because <laughs> the ego is always telling you that you don't exercise enough, that you're not doing uh, your, uh, you know, what you want to do. And then you say, oh man, I just, I can't, I'm just, I don't feel like doing anything. And then it's there, that self-judgment, that feeling bad about yourself because you are the way you are. Then that that self um, negative talk thought process is then is then activated. Even to say, oh, you know, now after this, oh, um, Why are you still feeling bad? Don't you know better? Don't you know better? And uh, do the soul process. Although, yeah, that could be a fine line. The ego could take on that uh, identity and make it into like, you're not good enough because you're not um, connecting with your soul. You're not channeling. You're not even doing anything. You don't even feel like doing that. So, um, that's also fine. That's also, you're then also caught in the ego. And it's okay to be caught in the ego. It's okay to not even notice that you're caught in the ego. We just want you to hear this because we know that as you are hearing this, <coughs> this, is the, this is the stream of awakening. These are the words that will, it will stay with you. Something of this vibration that we are sitting in now and that we are speaking through now will be like, it's like a dust of seeds 
that in the trail of having brought this into um, not only expression but even recording it will leave that trail and and it's not gonna it's not going to be when your ego remembers the trail and tells you oh look pick up the trail oh look you're not picking up the trail because it doesn't really want you to pick up the trail it's just this negative self-talk <coughs> Um, so that you feel bad about yourself again that you're not doing what you know is good for you to do like the exercising or the the healthy eating healthier eating and so forth um, um, so just to keep you in the negative loop because that's that's one of the identities that's that you're in that's just one of the identity so even that even that is okay Even that is okay. So to even with that, as we are speaking here, we don't tell you to do anything because that's just the ego. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's only coming from the ego ever, 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 ever. <laughs> I could just go keep on saying ever ever we could just keep on saying ever 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 um, okay maybe not forever maybe not all the time but let's continue the thought process the streaming process let's continue what yeah sometimes the ego comes in even now you know and how beautiful is that Ah, oh, because you get to ah, oh, you get to welcome it into your heart. Oh, you really, really do get to welcome it into your heart. Yeah. Remember, the ego is a program. It's not a being. It's not uh, uh it's not alive. It's just a program, and. You are alive. You are the life that is unconsciously stuck in that program, parts of you. The soul doesn't have a problem with any of this. The soul is not anxious. soul doesn't need you to hurry up, be better, or do anything different than you do it. Can you feel that truth? Can you feel that truth? Ooh. The soul is very comfortable sitting in this vehicle to, to the degree that it is, where it is awake to itself, watching, witnessing, seeing all the aspects of itself that are asleep to itself. And just enjoying being present with them. Even with the ones that are suffering. And it is only where the soul gets drawn into the suffering because it, it gets weak at that threshold where it is asleep 
where it is like what I'm seeing now is like a river, yeah, and then and then when it gets close to that where where it um, meets itself, the aspect of itself that is still asleep, you know, there's a threshold there. Where, where does it start? Where does the awareness of it end and the asleepness of it into a completely different dream and self-image and feeling begin? You know, when it's one stream. So it's almost like what I'm seeing now is that you have a river and then it flows into a part of the land where it gets colder and colder. And at some point, the river freezes. And even as the river freezes, and let's just say somewhere at a tip, it freezes completely and it just, there's, from that point on, there's no more flow. Let's just go with that image. But in the interfacing of the flowing river into the freezing river, you know, it's never static. It, it continues to flow underground through trickle, tr tiny little trickles until they also, droplet by droplet, get frozen. So that is a process. The process that you are going through and, and the stage in the process where you are is that these frozen um, ends of the river are beginning to thaw. So even though you find yourself being pulled in again and then identified with the frozen parts of the river and then just thinking well, who am I believing that I will ever flow into this and this land and have this and this experience that children will come it's a warm land and children will come and step into this river and play and I will get to hear the sound of ch children's voices singing laughing play who am I to have this dream and to believe in this dream? <laughs> Sitting here all frozen in wherever. Don't kid yourself. And then going back into that, right? But you know that the overall movement is thaw, thawing. And you always come back to your soul. You always come back to the truth of who you are. Into the fully, into the now moment like you are now. You always come back and you always remember. And every time you've been in that land, in that frozen land, and remember again, that is the process of thawing. And certainly we can give you this image uh, of something you can do. But it is not from the soul that it will judge you if you don't do it. That is only the ego. So if you find yourself back there again and you cannot believe that what is happening is a good thing. You cannot believe that being back in this In, in this no man's land, in, in, in this land of, that is frozen, being back in this land that is dead, where, where nothing seems to be moving, that is just gray, no connection, no joy, no motivation, no inspiration. To be back there because 
That is your truth. That's how it's going to feel then. But you will continue to grow your access, your remembrance your knowing of the truth that this is a part of thawing those frozen aspects of you that feel this way that feel completely um, resigned and un uninspired and unmotivated and dead So as you are feeling this way, you are thawing it, and when you remember that, you can actually use this image of, you sit down, and even though it's like this, almost like this untangible feeling, but the, you know, your whole, your whole, um, you are suffering from the fact that you don't feel like doing anything, and you'd so like to be inspired. And somehow you cannot fully love that what is, you know, that feeling that is happening in you, the emptiness. And so even though it's not any a triggered emotion in that sense, you may have to wait until a trigger comes like today. But you don't really have to. It's always there. That you can sit with that. And embrace that feeling. Because somewhere in you there is a feeling of that doesn't want this. I don't want this. I don't like this. Somewhere in you, you are suffering. And you can sit down and feel that and just go and now the image we're giving you is imagine then that aspect of yourself. What does it look like? And I keep getting now this woman just laying in the corner of a room facing the wall, curled up in a ball and with her eyes closed and just checked out, you know, waiting for death. And so whichever way she shows up, whichever way you show up, that aspect of you shows up. Just go there in your mind and you know, lay down and go there and just love her. Whichever way that comes to you, how you wish to show your love how you wish and it's first it's just to feel that it's just about feeling that just love her and it's just that feeling you know don't go into memory of if any memory should come up seeing yourself in a, in a scene or anything no just just go to the feeling and see what that aspect of, of yourself that is feeling that, what it looks like right now, where it is in your body and what it looks like right now. And you just go there. And what I'm getting right now is I'm actually spooning her. I'm going to spoon her. She has a weird haircut, and she's wearing a suit. It's really weird. Like a, a, a woman's suit. Like a, almost like a head stewardess suit. I don't know why, why it's looking like that. Oh, 
oh, okay, yeah, that's the adapt itself into the into a world, <laughs> yeah, into a world that is. not organic, not aligned. And she'd rather die. Yeah. Than function in that machine. Then continue to to play that wheel, that little functioning wheel in a machine that is only there, it's not serving anyone. It's only there to siphon off the energy of these aspects of yourself, exactly. <laughs> and the machine, of course, is only the ego. And uh, the egoic mind, yes. And that is only, its only purpose is to create separation from the soul I still uh, yeah okay is to create separation from the soul that's what it was designed for and of course because it's a part of the mind it's like an insert of the mind, then mind, all the minds, human minds with the insert of the AI, um, egoic program mind, um, created all the structures, you know, that we're living in today, the forms and societal, economical and all these structures through through this egoic mind and through that identification and so also all the structures coming from it are you know they're an ex they're an, um, representation of that they're also siphoning off our energy and this one now this aspect that I'm seeing is like it's just laying down to die it just can't do that anymore and so I, I've gone there now, and I'm now spooning her, and I, and I put my arms around her, um, like here, the waist, you know, I'm holding on to her, and I have my, I have my, like my head um, against her back, on the back of her head, yeah. And I'm just loving her. And just by being the truth, I remind her of who she is. And I tell her that you can come with me now. We can merge. We can merge now. I love you. Yeah, she's having a hard time to wake up. And I tell her that the only way that she can merge with me is she's going to have to wake up. Yeah, so now she woke up and she turned around and she grabbed my hands. And she's smiling. And now she's starting to um, close her eyes and shake and lie on her back. 
and I'm standing up now. It's okay, something isn't right. Okay, okay. Because she was lying down here and I was standing like this. But then it was like she became lighter, lighter, lighter and she she like started to float and twist and then it went really, really quick that she came into me. Whew. Yeah. And she came into me like this. So, you know, it's the same stature, the same pose. And this is also now my guide is giving me the image um, from the dream that he gave me where I was in, in the prison cell the beginning of the dream and I was rattling on, on um, the, on the um, bars of the prison cell until I was exhausted and then I collapsed again and, and then at some point this light being sh you know, appeared and that was me too um, very spherical light body me um, that was floating in the middle of the cell um, off the ground and looking up in such a way that I was like completely like, almost like in um, yeah in bliss and you know, some, being almost somewhere completely else, not com at all, not being in this in the um, in the cell presence. There was no presence in the cell, and the way he described it to me was that my head of the floating being of the floating self was tilted back so far that it almost had an unnatural tilt to it, and so the self that is that is the identified self or the ego self not 100 percent of course put her arms around you know i put my arms around around that part of me and she didn't she didn't give me, you know, the, no reaction, no reaction. And so then I, as, as the prisoner self, as the, as the human self, maybe, as the non-embodied soul self, as the identified self, thought, well, what's wrong with me, you know? I'm not good enough? Am I not good enough for her? Am I too dirty? Am I, you know, am I too low vibrational? Am I not good enough for her? And so, you know, that's what the ego will do. I'm not, I'm not good enough to embody my soul. I'm not good enough to um, step into 5D and to experience all this that I so wish to experience and that that comes from the soul. I'm not good enough to awaken. Yeah, so that's part of that the egoic programming. And so in in the um, in in the um, image, at some point I don't let go anymore. I wrap my arms around her. I don't let go anymore. And then we merge. And so that's the image that just came to me now, that was just given to me now. And it's, it's in the reverse. Now I am the soul. I am that, um, my soul coming in this Christ consciousness to my lower aspect. 
and wrapping my arms around it and saying, I'm here. Wake up. I am here. So it's exactly the, yeah. Oh my gosh, getting tired. But this is very good. Thank you so much, dearies. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're not quite there yet. Just a tad more. We want to rescue you fully in that sense to the other side, even though there is no urge here, but that is what you desire. Um, to really get this, to really, really get this. Yeah, because you have been suffering, you know? So, um, just know that none of that suffering is in vain and none of that suffering is on account of you not being good enough, evolved enough, fast enough, is on account of you being lazy and Yeah, that, that's, it just always comes down to not good enough. And it takes the suffering that is there whew, to remind you, to come back to that point of reminding, of remembrance. And it always takes as long as it takes. It's not personal, it's not something, it's only the egoic mind, once again, that will give the impression that it is in your hands to, you know, how long you suffer, how long it takes until you sit down to channel and then remember the truth, or whatever, uh, wh whichever way it comes, that you remember the truth and that you can consciously also recognize that what, what is happening here is that you are regaining more aspects of yourself, more split off aspects of yourself. I, imagine this, every single time one of those signals um, came to you growing up, um, you know, from the moment of birth, a signal comes to you and this can come from anywhere. It can come from, from um, other humans, and the signal can also simply be um, a code that is in the atmosphere. It could, it could be a, a code, a, a sound, like for example, in, in the, um, the vibration of, of um, technology, you know, in the, in the vibration of the liquid frozen, you know, the frozen sound of the buildings, the architecture that is also sound, that also hold, holds code. And so many buildings, and then of course, also not just the form creates a certain vibration, but also every material has a certain vibration. And all of this imprint imprints us and gives us a certain feeling. And also the buildings were built by egoic minds and are built to um, of course this is not conscious yes but because that's what the egoic program AI program it was designed to do so so all the uh, identified minds that created architecture through the egoic mind of course there's also they also, how much soul is flowing through, how much true original creativity is flowing through, and that's then the saving grace, of course, of the architecture. But all, the, most of it has been, in, in our lifetime, uh, egoic influence, and that has been also the structure that has um, been, been um, that influence has been growing and growing and it has found its peak 
at the very end and, and t until it shifts and, 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 and still we're still seeing that we're still seeing it peak 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 everywhere um, as the egoic mind is losing is thawing and losing its energy because we're the ones the, with our consciousness is what powers it so when we have regained our consciousness it's just like a it's, it's not being used when it loses all its power it's not even there anymore it's not even there anymore so um, yeah architecture is all has also been built it's 90 degree angles to again it's always to to undermine the connection the the access to unity consciousness to our soul to our power to our um, sovereignty yeah so um where was i where were we where was it It takes as long as it takes, exactly, exactly, yes. Ah, every stream, yes. So you come into this world as a baby and then every single code that arrives in your field of your individual um, expression of, of your individual soul, so of this body, creates a signal um, is a is a information that is in reverse in the inverted of the truth and has that imprint every single one has been recorded and then they find together in the likeness of themselves of the vibration that they are and create bigger streams stronger beliefs and create more um, suction to pull in consciousness to let it fall asleep but when you fall asleep it is not your consciousness falling asleep it is your awake consciousness connecting to what is still asleep and when you connect to interface with what is still asleep you may jump over from the witnessing position into the identified position and then that seems to be all that you are and it takes you over even if that is just a very small aspect of you when you make contact with it in order to truly be able to make that contact you have to recognize it and you have to feel it that's the contact is when you feel it and at the moment since as the embodiment of the soul and where you are remembering your soul is doesn't have yet this momentum this gain this um, so even though you're 51 percent already um, aware of your soul in the positive although you're not even quite sure about that you know that you're 51 percent in the positive but it's just it's just okay let's just not 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 even go there the larger part of you is in the positive that's for sure that's for sure yes and yet still it's not to the point that you don't because you also have those triggers where it's instantly you you recognize it for what it is and you can you can feel it and and just be grateful that it showed up in your space and and just embrace it and love it and then it just dissolves so quickly but with the bigger streams that are way way down in the in the dungeons um, it can still happen that it 
it will um, suck you in and then then the the whole aspect of yourself not aspect your true self that's not aspected that is your true self that is connected to the whole entire all that is tree of life that seems to be you, you seem to be disconnected from that when you are in that identified field And that just takes as long as it takes for you to then remember yourself back into your truth while you have made contact with that um, aspect of yourself and thereby you bring it back home. And remember that it's only the ego that gets um, impatient and that is suffering and that uh, believes that um, this is not something good that is happening. You, it's your fault. It's your inability and your um, sh shortcoming that um, <clears throat> you are in this no man's land, in this frozen land, in this place where you know now we're talking about the depressed state of I am, you know, I just resign, I am no one, I can't do anything here, and, and I have no traction, I, I am not capable of these things, yeah? It is only the ego that will feel that way, that this is, this is because you are lazy, and you are all of these things that you are still suffering and that it's taking so so long to go through this process okay yes and so now you're very very tired but as we as we lay this out you are certainly feeling into the truth of this landscape and you are certainly getting these glimpses of how the structure truly is the perspective that is a that is has no filter that is as it is raw the veil the, where the veil is lifted now i have to stop because i'm so tired but this is very 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 good thank you so much thank you so much